How's everyone doing? I hope uh, everybody's having a great KubeCon. Um, I'm excited to be here to talk about CNCF TAC runtime um, and some of the work that we've been doing. So a little bit about our charters. We are here primarily to uh, help the adoption of different types of workloads and whether these are like batch sensitive workloads or late latency sensitive workloads but all of them in the context of cloud native environments uh, we work closely with the technical oversight committee in the cncf the toc and then we have the liaisons so for current currently we have three liaisons they're part of the toc and we currently have three chairs we also have a tech lead. We're also looking for more tech leads and folks interested in participating and joining, uh, feel free to reach out. Our meetings are uh, the first and third uh, Thursday of every month. And our communication happens over Slack and also happens through our mailing list. Yeah, some of the things that we do, uh, uh, primarily three things. So we do outreach to projects. For example, we go to GitHub repositories or we see what's coming into the CNCF. And we try to see if these projects are interested in presenting in our meetings, try to engage them. And sometimes what we do is like we, we talk to some TOC members and see if the, some of these projects are good fits for like the CNCF. We also support existing projects navigate the whole ecosystem of the CNCF and also the, the different tags in the CNCF. So there's, there's different scopes like observability, there's tag delivery, there's uh, the tag uh, storage. So like the different, different tags and how, how these projects fit into these tags. And finally, we go out and educate, the, for example, this talk is educate the community on what the tag is doing, what some of the projects are about, and how people can get involved. So the scope of the tag is primarily around some of these projects. So you have things like WebAssembly, you have things like Kubernetes falls into you know, the scope of the, the tag. Container runtime shims like container container D and, and cryo. You have other things like um, K3S, which is Kubernetes at the edge, and Tinkerbell that allows you to uh, provision bare metal machines. So a lot of different uh, ver uh, projects, but all within how you run workloads. So we have these different scope areas. So the general wor uh, workload or orchestration, and then you know we have Volcano and Kubernetes fit in there. And we have the VMs and runtimes. Uh, so con we have Cryo, ContainerD, the WebAssembly uh, runtimes. We have the container image registries like Quay and Harbor. Uh, and other projects like rootless containers are there. Uh, another part of the scope is a special purpose operating systems. And that's operating systems meant to run something unique. And in this case, it's just to run containers. So like Flatcar, it's an operating system that allows you to be there just to run containers. And then there's the AI Edge MLOps space. And some projects there include like Super Edge, Cube Edge. There's things like uh, Kubeflow and MLflow. So all in you know, scope of machine learning. And finally, we have a working groups and we're open to expanding this. So the current working group is the container orchestrated device, which I'll talk about in the last part of the presentation. So now for runtimes. So what are some of the things that we've been doing? So uh, we had the Wasm Cloud project come in to our meeting and talk about what they do. Uh, if you want to learn a lot more about this, there, there was a cloud native Wasm day earlier uh, on Tuesday, and I encourage you to check out some of the talks. Uh, but essentially what they want to do here is have a model where you have these capabilities and actors. And these capabilities and actors are WebAssembly modules. And the capabilities can be things like allow something to connect to a different system, for example, like a Redis data database or like a MySQL database. 
uh, and, and do that with WebAssembly. And then the actors, it's a model that makes some action on those capabilities. For example, if it's a database, insert some data into the database. If you're interacting for, for, with a device at the edge, you would actually be you know, reading some data from that device. So those are some of the examples. So um, a lot of interesting things happening here. So uh, excited to see what happens next with this uh, project. So Wasm Edge is another project that got involved and this is primarily a, a runtime for WebAssembly. So if you build your WebAssembly binary, you can use this to just run it. Right? So, and it provides some capabilities like sandboxing and they're trying to comply with the, the WASI specification from the bytecode alliance. And use cases are you know, running WebAssembly at edge devices or IoT type of applications. You can even use it with web applications we're embedding that into uh, SaaS applications. This project is currently in the CNCF sandbox and we'll see a lot more of this. InNative is another project related to WebAssembly. And essentially this is a ahead of time compiler for folks who want to run C binaries in some specific uh, cases. So you, may not actually want to run WebAssembly because you, you, need, you may need the runtime in that, in, in that specific case, you may need to have something like WASI, uh, WebAssembly system interface. And with this, you, you would run something with the, just the C libraries and the C um, linking and make everything possible uh, through just like, like a C binary. So that's in native and Quark is another project. It's, it's um, another runtime and it's OCI compliant. It's a pretty early project, but essentially what they're trying to do is you have this um, uh, runtimes that are based on virtual machines like Kata containers, and you have things like Firecracker from Amazon. And basically they're trying to trim that layer down. Uh, the VM has uh, some performance implications. We got to, we have to bring up VM layer. So it's just that extra layer. And what they want to do here is a hypervisor um, at the bottom uh, from scratch and, and called Qvisor. And that basically is written in Rust. And then on top of that, you have a, a custom kernel. So the main purpose of this is having something higher performance. This project is pretty early, still not in the CNCF, but you know, still in progress. So another uh, initiative that uh, we got uh, the folks involved with is QoS for container runtimes. So right now you have things like the CPU scheduler in Kubernetes, where you can specify, like pin a CPU if you wanna, you know, the full, uh, you know, workload to, to, to use up that CPU. And with this, it, you know, in some Kubernetes nodes, you may have some capabilities, like uh, you may have higher memory and lower memory or latency, or you may have like something like a device that is faster than another, for example, like a, like a disk drive that is faster than another. So you would actually be able to select these on different Kubernetes nodes depending on how you have this configured. So that's the end goal of this project, it's still going on. So there's a pull request in container D. Uh, it's currently supported with Cryo, uh, but yeah, so with that, we'll see more of this as well. So another project um, is Sysbox that uh, we got to see in, essentially this project is a Docker container, but in the Docker container, everything acts like a VM. So you have system D, you have like your init processes. Uh, and use cases for, for this type of thing is people running CICD systems that want to have that VM experience or just people who, who want to use Docker containers and that have been using a lot of VMs and, and then want to like an easy path to, to use containers or they want to use that behavior that you typically get with containers. So it's, it's faster than a traditional VM because it, it, it just runs in a Docker container. So rootless containers is another project from uh, the entity folks and container D. And essentially this allows you to run 
a container as a root user. So the, the container actually thinks it's root. So it has th access to things like slash proc, or slash um, sys, so, so main components of the system. So you're fooling the container that, it, that it's thinking it's root. Uh, but essentially on the host, you're running as a different user. So the use cases is like you want to prevent um, uh, you know, running containers that, that may, may compromise your host. We'll see a lot of progress on this as well. So I encourage you to check out the website. Trial is another project that um, it's a container registry, but uh, they're targeting something higher performance than you know, like Harbor or Quay, which are some of the container registries. Uh, the, one of the things that they're doing is just they're writing the whole thing in Rust. So they're, well, they're thinking like maybe this is a lower memory footprint. And they're also thinking about creating a P2P mechanism. So you distribute your container images across a fleet of Kubernetes clusters in a more efficient way. So when you start your workloads, you already have that container image and you know, they just start right away. This is a pretty early project, so it's not even in a CNCF sandbox, but we'll see more of this. Uh, and the scope of workloads, what type of projects uh, we've actually been talking to the tag? So Keda, um, you've probably seen a lot of this and there's some mention about it in the keynote. So it's basically auto-scaling uh, your Kubernetes pods based on events. So for example, you, you may have something like Apache Kafka or Amazon SQS, or you may have something like um, a file uploaded to something like S3, that's a particular event, or multiple files uploaded to an S3 bucket. And this will automatically, automatically detect that through metrics and basically auto scale up or down depending on, on the specific event. So uh, it, this actually takes the HPA, the traditional HPA in Kubernetes to the next level. And this project is currently in incubation. K Armada or Carmada is a project that allows you to manage several Kubernetes clusters across multiple clouds or, or if you have a private cloud or if you have edge clusters. So it's the centralized control plane for managing all these uh, Kubernetes clusters. And it actually builds on the initial idea around Federation B2. It's a project by the Kubernetes community. But the Cube Edge folks took on some of the, the code and took on, took on some of the the architecture and then created this system that allows you to manage uh, the Kubernetes clusters in all these different places. Uh, and, and there's a, a, you know, the motivation factor here because you, you want to be able to manage Kubernetes clusters in, at the edge, right, with, with something like Cube Edge. And this project, uh, I think, is applying for the CNCF sandbox. Volcano is a project currently going for incubation. And what they're trying to do is uh, like workloads that you need to schedule or a lot of resources ahead of time before you run that workload, like very intensive workloads, I mean, AI machine, machine learning type of workloads qualify for this. Uh, so for example, you, you for processing a lot of data, you need to reserve like a hundred cores or a lot of memory across multiple uh, nodes. So this project allows you to do that. Uh, so it, it integrates with things like TensorFlow, Spark, PyTorch, some of those really popular big data and machine learning frameworks. Confidential computing is an initiative from the folks in the Kata containers community. So you'll see in a lot of these projects, there's a lot of overlap with some of the other tags. So for with this project, you see, you'll see overlap with something like the tag security. So in, in essence, what they're trying to do here is having you, the end user create a workload that, that, that that end user only knows about. So when the, the end user wants to run in something like a cloud service provider, like 
AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, um, they know that this CSB or, or CSP owns the infrastructure underneath, but they don't want the, the, the cloud provider to know what's being run there. So that's why it's called confidential. So there's things like encryption at, at the container image level, there's encryption at the memory level. So a lot of different layers of security and providing that, that, that confidentiality in, in whatever you're running. K3S, uh, Kubernetes distribution or Kubernetes uh, lightweight for the edge. So what they did is actually they took the Kubernetes source code and they packaged it up in, in a small footprint. It's less than 100 megabytes. Uh, so they created different components out of the main components in Kubernetes. So you have the uh, K3S server, which includes all the components in the control plane. Uh, and it also, instead of using something like etcd, it uses a SQLite database, or you can connect to something like MySQL. And then you have a K3S agent that has all the Kubernetes components that you typically have on a Kubernetes uh, node. And, and, you know, like the kubelet, the networking, and it also uses uh, the container D. So they're looking at, uh, you know, embedding this into like lighter nodes or ARM type of um, processors at the edge and maybe, uh, you know, a lot of applications with IoT, CICD. So you'll see kind of like the, the general theme is very similar to some of the other existing projects. And they're currently in the CNCS sandbox, so they're looking to mature to and go into incubation maybe within the next year. Qvert essentially is uh, uh, Kubernetes allowing or virtual machines managed by Kubernetes. Right? So instead of just using your typical open stack to manage your virtual machines or using something like um, AWS Outposts or something like Google Anthos that allows you to manage the, your own data center, you can use Kubernetes for that. So you, you bring up the, your, your VMs with the Kubernetes control plane and you know, interacts with a kubelet and it manages all your, your VMs or your fleet of VMs. Currently and going for incubation. Uh, so we'll see that uh, going, be in incubation maybe in the next couple of months. Crosslet uh, allows you to run WebAssembly modules with uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so we, we looked at some of the other WebAssembly projects like Wasm Edge, uh, but those actually don't necessarily run on top of Kubernetes. So this you know, makes it possible, like you, you build your WebAssembly module and then you can run it on a Kubernetes node. Um, it can be located anywhere, like in the, in the edge or can be located in your, in your own data center or cloud provider. So in the scope of special purpose operating systems, uh, we had this project uh, called Vortail uh, present and Essentially, this is an operating system defined by a Tomo file. So you can you know, create your own you know, operating system for your specific workload. Uh, there's no SSH login or there's no shell. So it's very uh, custom made. They also have a library of different operating systems in a similar way that you have like a Docker registry, but in, in this case, you have a library of micro VMs with operating systems. So for your specific use case, you can, uh, you, you can use some of these. Uh, and the maintainers are also working on another project called Directive, which is um, a way to run uh, serverless workloads using Knative. So now for the machine learning and edge and AI space. So we had the TFX project come in and present and this is machine learning end-to-end -end management. So you create your machine learning model, you, you manipulate your data, and you try it, and in the end, you actually send it over to some place to serve that model, to serve it as an inference model. Uh, this is from the same folks from the TensorFlow community, you know, the Google folks, uh, and yeah, so this, this is just very similar to something like Kubeflow. 
And speaking of Qflow and TFX, MLflow is also a very similar project that uh, you know, manages end-to-end -end machine learning. In this case, it allows you to track your models. You can have different versions of machine learning models. You can do your CI, CD. So maybe you have a model version 0.1, and then for some reason that actually doesn't work, then you can revert to like, you know, 0.x or 0. Point, or you have 0 0.2 and then you want to revert to 0 0.1, right? So you can manage all that machine learning life cycle and take, your, take that to production. Now for KubeDL, which is another project, it also is very similar to MLflow and TFX, but the difference here is that you can run that on top of Kubernetes. So you can tweak that uh, model within your cluster. And again, you can make something optimal for your machine learning model and at the end serve that in a production environment uh, using a Kubernetes service, a typical Kubernetes service, service. This project is currently in the CNCF sandbox. Acri is another project that is also looking at the edge computing space and essentially what they're trying to do or what they're working on is with Kubernetes automatically detect devices at the edge. So typical use cases are like sensors, like temperature sensors, cameras, or other type of device that you, you may want to put in the, in, in the edge. And some of these devices can come and go depending on, you know, like maybe there's something breaks, like a cable, somebody trips over a cable. And this project will automatically detect that. And it, it will also allow you to have backup devices. So like if one of the devices fails, then it automatically uh, gets added to your pool of devices. Or if somebody's out in the field, they can plug in the device and they don't need to do any, anything. They just, it just auto configures. There was an interesting talk uh, earlier on Tuesday. Uh, they talked about, talked about how to use Acre with WebAssembly and Crosslet. So I encourage you to, to take a look at that. Um, a lot of new developments in this space. And this project is in the CNCF sandbox. Super Edge, it's a project very similar to Cube Edge, and, and that allows you to run workloads um, at the edge and using uh, Kubernetes. So very similar. So I mean, this is something that the CNCF is trying to figure out. Some of these projects have a lot of overlap, and some organizations may may feel that they want to use a specific project for certain reasons. Maybe they the, the configuration, the source code, or so different things. So that the CNCF is, is working on, on coming up with like ways of uh, end users uh, to navigate this ecosystem. So as you can see, Super Edge is very similar to something like Cube Edge, uh, and it's currently in the CNCF sandbox. Then Open Yurt is another project that is also again very similar to Cube Edge and and uh, Super Edge, and. Yeah, so you have your edge component and then you have the centralized uh, component that can run in the cloud or your own data center and just to manage your work, real workloads. So we did have some other projects present in the past and got involved. So these are some examples like, uh, you know, talked about Cube Edge, Quay, Talos, which is a special purpose operating system for running containers. So lots of different projects. So encourage you to take a look uh, uh, if you're in, in the space. And we also have some upcoming projects. Uh, in Clavera Containers is a project that is uh, working on a different take on confidential computing. It's the folks from Alibaba. So excited to, to hear about them. Armada is another project that um, uh, allows you to manage workloads across multiple Kubernetes clusters. Then there's K0S, K0S, I guess. It's, a, it's also a Kubernetes distribution for the edge. And of course, the WebAssembly projects, we'll see a lot more from them in the future. And maybe we'll see more of that, like maybe next year too, in, in the next KubeCon, some, some more progress in those projects. So if you have a, if you have a project in the space or if you know of anything, you know, just reach out and, and let us know and, and, and 
we want these projects in the, in the space to get involved. So uh, for the container orchestrated workgroup, so we have this single workgroup, but again, like I said, we, we're trying to expand this and uh, create workgroups for other areas. One example could be like something at the edge, something, another workgroup work uh, that could be create or working group uh, could be created would be uh, something like related to machine learning. So lots, lots of opportunities to, uh, to work together and try to come up with standards uh, so what's happening in a lot of these open source projects is that you see uh, folks in different projects working on different standards or ways to identify something, whether in machine learning or whether uh, a workload in the edge. Uh, and we want these standards to come together and have something common that helps the end user in the end. Because uh, if you have too many things everywhere, the end users can get really confused. So for the container orchestrated working group, uh, what they're trying to do is come up with a way to define container uh, devices uh, or device specifications for regular containers. And, you know, and the, the challenge here is that you, you have a lot of different disparate um, definitions uh, uh, it's very fragmented, so the team is working to try to get that together. And again, the use cases are, are runtime, specific things like uh, deep learning, you know, 5G, and in, in targeting specific devices like GPUs or, or specific processors. Yeah, so that's, that's all that I have, all the projects. So we have um, you know, the mailing list, we have the Slack channel, we have the, you know, GitHub repository. So check those out and yeah, and feel free to reach out. We're happy to help and we just want more people to get involved. That's all I have. So if you, if, do you, does anybody have any questions or anything that, any questions about the project or anything on how to get involved or happy to take those. All good. Any any questions online or? Okay. So, I mean, either was very clear or there there wasn't a lot of interest. <laughs> Thank you.